chances are you hate these little creatures. Chances are you've been harangued, harassed, and just plain ticked off by this tiny animal. How could something so small, so tiny, so seemingly insignificant be the cause of so much human suffering? You're looking at a mosquito larva, the immature stage of the adult insect that is known throughout the world for its blood-sucking lifestyle. I'm Simon Schreier, Interpretive Programs Coordinator at the Wild Center, and over the next few minutes, we'll go on an adventure in search of these vampire creatures. To find a mosquito, I have to think like a mosquito. I've spent months training to get into the mind of a mama mosquito. I've got my wings, and I've got this comically large syringe. Now all I need is my first blood meal. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Simon. What's hey, up? How you doing? Uh, oh my God, look over there. Hey, that hurt. I'm not helping you again. This blood that Shannon let me take contains lots of protein and iron. I'll use that to make almost 100 eggs over the course of five days. Oh. Once I've developed those 100 eggs, it's time to find a place to lay them. Now, most of us know mosquitoes as an airborne species, but their eggs and their larvae are actually aquatic, which means they live in fresh water. So I found a nice spot here. It's very calm, very still. The current's not gonna carry my eggs away. So I'm gonna lay all 100 of my eggs right here. All right, here we go. Oh boy, whoo, yeah, oh boy, whoo. Yeah, there it is, there it is. All right, little guys, time for mama to say bye. Oh, just lay those. And now it's time to find more blood. The time between laying the eggs and hatching depends on water temperature, food, and the type of mosquito. But eventually, little mosquito larvae break out of the eggs. These larvae are sometimes called wrigglers because of the jerking motion they make as they move through the water. Wrigglers are well adapted for their aquatic environment. They feed off any microscopic particles they can wrap their mouth parts around, and they breathe through a tube on their butt called a siphon. Eventually, the wrigglers develop into pupa. At this point, the mosquito still lives in the water, but it no longer feeds. Finally, the mosquito emerges from the pupal case after two days to a week, and the whole cycle begins again. Standing water is critical to mosquito development. Without standing water, they can't go through their larval stage and emerge to become adults. So that standing water can be anything from a natural pool to a man-made structure like this plastic one. So we're gonna take a look in here. I'm gonna use my vial and my pipette, and we're gonna see if we can find some wrigglers in this water. All right, looks like we've got one. We're gonna head inside and take a look on the microscope. So now we're gonna take a look at that larvae we collected outside. I'm gonna open up my vial, open up this Petri dish. Just go in there, try to, there we go. And there we go, right on the Petri dish. Yeah, so here we've got the larva that we collected out in our maintenance yard from that black plastic pool. There we go. You can see that thrashing movement it's making. That's where it gets its name Wriggler from. So mosquito larvae also make their home in natural habitats, like this bog we're walking through right now. Whew. That's smelly. Oh yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for a little carnivorous plant, and that plant might have some larvae inside of it. Oh. 
Oh, here we go. Here's some great ones right over here. So here we've got some pitcher plants. These are carnivorous plants. What they have is this folded over modified leaf that has a little bit of water in it and insects fall into that water where the plant digests them. But there are some insects like mosquito larvae that can actually call the inside of that pitcher home. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and collect some of the mosquito larvae that might be inside this pitcher plant. Yeah, there we go, I see it. Yeah, we've got some really big ones. All those little white wriggling things are tiny little mosquito larvae that live inside that pitcher plant. Here at the Wild Center, we have this model of a pitcher plant. You can look in and actually see the little mosquito larvae hanging out at the surface of the water. I love this exhibit because it reminds us that even though mosquitoes can be a nuisance, they're also an important part of the ecosystem. Mosquito larvae are an excellent meal for trout. Some mosquitoes are pollinators, helping flowers like this bog orchid thrive. But mosquitoes can also carry diseases like malaria and West Nile virus. That's why it's important to limit their human-made habitats. Go around your home and check for areas where water accumulates. Some good spots are buckets and even old sporting equipment. Empty out any water that's gathering in those areas. Reducing standing water can help reduce the amount of mosquito habitat and go a long way in protecting human health. You can also help scientists around the world track mosquito habitat using the Globe Observer app. All you need is a magnifying lens, a way to collect a water sample, and a mobile device. Go to globe.gov to download the Globe Observer app. To that end, institutions around the world are uniting for International Science Center and Science Museum Day on November 10th. Together, we're working to find solutions to some of the world's greatest challenges, like climate change and human health. Visit iscsmd.org to find out if your local institution is participating. Now you know what the buzz is all about. So remember to check out the Globe Observer app and get hands-on with the science of mosquitoes. And celebrate International Science Centered and Science Museum Day on November 10th. From the Wild Center, this is Simon Schreier. Hey Shannon, come here for a second. I want to show you something cool. Again, I fell for that last time. I'm going to get you. Oh boy. <laughs>